Um, do you recall how old you were when you went to residential school? I was 10. I was 10 years old when I was taken away from my parents. And uh, taken way far away from the place I knew home to a place I didn't know was home. Um, what school did you attend? I went to a residential school called Pelican Lake and Solo Cape. And then uh, they moved me to Shingwak Indian Residential School in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, like, did anyone else in your family attend residential school? Uh, there was 11 of us, in the fa 11 kids in the family. And uh, I believe uh, eight of us, eight of us left, went to residential school. Um, like, were you able to be with them at, like, any time? Uh, when you go to a residential school, uh, they divide the girls from one part of the school and uh, the boys on one side. So you didn't really get a chance to, to, to see your sisters or to talk to them. You wouldn't be able to communicate with them. And uh, I think I played with my brothers, so my one brother. Or two of my brothers were with me, so I played with them. They're in the same, uh, they're in the same uh, dorm as me, like a dormitory. Um, did you like residential school? No, I didn't. No? No, no because uh, it's a place where they try to change me from who I was to something I wasn't. Um, <coughs> did any of them like residential school? Like any no, of no they didn't. No. When you went there, you all you wanted to do was go home to your family. Um, where did you live previously to a residential school? I lived on a place called Makoko Batten Lake. It's on the Albany River, way up north by, it's about 300 miles north, uh, inland from James Bay. Really um, like how did you get to the school? By a, what they call a bush plane. Uh, it lands on floats. It used to come and fish. My, my dad was a, a commercial fishing, so he used to, they used to come by a plane, pick us up by a plane. And then by train, load us onto a train, and then into a, I think it was a bus or a car or something, and to the residential Um, how did, your, how did it affect your view on the world or on other people? As I grew up, I quit school because I never wanted to. I didn't like residential school, so I quit school when I was grade nine. And uh, I didn't like it because I was uh, abused by uh, ministers and uh, two ministers and even affairs agent. I was, uh, I was sexually abused by them, so I didn't like it. I, I, it made me hate churches and the white people. I didn't like white people because uh, there were white people that were doing that to me that wanted to change me, that wanted to change who I was. So I hated them for a long time. Um, so. Do you remember any like severe discipline to you or other students? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, like if we, we spoke our language, like we couldn't speak our language. Like I speak uh, Ojibwe, and if they heard me speak Ojibwe, they would strap me, they'd put me in a corner, take me outside and beat me. And, uh, stuff like that. Um, have you personally witnessed like other people being disciplined or were you told to go help? Like hold down people. I've uh, I, I never helped in holding down people, but I've been I've been uh, I've been uh, like I've been re assaulted by other kids. Like I got I was knifed. I got a big knife knife here in my hand when I was ten years old. They used to, uh, they used to tie me up and they used to cut me up and I with a knife. So things like that happen. Um, like what was a typical? Typical day in residential school. Typical day, if I can remember it. You know, when you're, it's hard for me to remember because I block things when I was young. Mm -hmm. I, but uh, what I remember is that we used to go to, when we first got there, it was like a military, like an army camp, where you had to obey everything that they, that they told you to do. Make your bed early in the morning. We used to have rows of beds, and children used to, line up in their beds, make their beds every morning. And uh, go, we go eat and then we go to church. We go to, we went to church slots, we prayed every day. And, uh, and in the evening, so. 
but we went to school. I don't think I think we went to school about probably three hours a day for four, whatever it was. Very long. I remember it. In one, in a one, uh, it's not a classroom like this. It was just a one room building. So. Um, do you remember like any type of like, food or? Oh, I I remember uh, they used to give us, uh, but I can re I can remember that good I don't remember that good parts like pie fruit or anything like that because if I, if I had anything like that the big boys would like would take them from me and if I didn't give it to them they'd beat me up but so what I remember is I think they used to give us uh, fish it was rotten fish like it was. It was what some of the food was rotten that they gave us. So I can still remember those days. Um, are you in touch with like any schoolmates from Western Just a few of them. Just uh, but we don't talk about we don't talk about the rest of our, the residential schoolmates. We just say hi. Um, have you went to like counseling or anything to like cope, or did you just kind of do it mentally? No, no, no. What uh, what happened to me was uh, as I got older, I eventually became a police officer. So they taught me integrity and stuff like that and how to treat people. And um, but I also found that as Native people, what the churches was trying to get away from us was our own spiritual beliefs. Like we had our own spiritual beliefs, and the churches thought they were we were worshiping were worshiping the devil. They were trying to beat that out of us. But uh, I'm 62 years old now. In the, in the last 12, 15 years, I've been I went back to our old ways, the Indian ways, to learn our religion, our way of life, how we were as native people. And in our in our culture, we had a really powerful culture, really beautiful culture. We, especially where uh, spirituality is concerned. That's what you're starting to see it come back now, like the powwows and stuff like that. That's what the government didn't want the native people to have. If you had that those days, if you were practicing any kind of religion, they sent you to, they sent you to jail. You know, you were punished for it. So, uh, so anyway, now we can do it again. It's uh, like we, we can practice uh, spirituality now. So I've learned a lot. Like uh, what I've learned from that is I learned to forgive people. I've learned to forgive the churches, the people that were involved in my abuse. And basically, you know, I don't, I don't hate the white people anymore because they're just like us. They're, they just want to survive. It's like, yeah, you know, we're all, we're all equal. We're, uh, we're not any different just because I'm brown or they're white. Doesn't mean they're above me or I'm above them. We're all equal. And it's a good thing to know because uh, I like I like everybody. I don't, I don't care what their color, their skin is. Not. It's just you know, it's just a part of my life that I went through, and I have to learn from that. So, so it's good. Um, what would be the pos What would be the positive aspect of residential school? Me sitting here talking to you about it. <laughs> I think uh, the positive aspect is because even though uh, I had the rough time with it, I. I learned to speak English, and in this uh, in this country, as far as uh, if you can speak English, you're doing good, you know, and because people can understand what you want, you know, how to, you can you can re you can relate what to other people what you feel and stuff like that. So it's good like that. That's it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm honored that you asked me to come here. Here. Thank you.